welcome to second part of the two part series on the crux of time management and personal productivity in case you missed the first part please look that part before dwelling into this episode this video is in continuation of the first part and we are going to explore topics such as task automation automation of digital life order of task weekly review journaling avoidance of procrastination myth of multitasking zygarnik effect pomodoro technique productivity tips for teachers and students and so on task automation is really really important recurring shallow task or events should be scheduled in the in the google calendar i i, I enter the google calendar to this uh, you know recurring task because algorithms are much more powerful than human being for uh, doing this kind of task mundane task i can say for example weekly fridge cleaning on friday evening every friday evening i clean my fridge and weekly review on sunday morning so again that's a recurring task every sunday morning i spend quality time uh, uh, you know approximately 1 hour on review the task for the next uh, upcoming week so weekly review is really important and some habits are something called keystone habits so it's like keystone species you know the, the some habits do have this chain reaction if you do that habit one example would be making bed in every morning uh, the first thing i do when i wake up every every day morning is that i i make my bed i fold neatly my blanket and i make my bed really nicely because that one small habit has got a a chain reaction my entire day becomes far more productive when i do this so that such habits are something called keystone habit you know there is a concept in sweden called ordning ochreda everything has its own proper place you know so self discipline is extremely important so make tidy up your space everything has got proper order and proper place right so no uh, you know weird uh, things or chaotic uh, items on your uh, desk or in your room my time in school scouts have taught me a lot of lessons uh, especially on be prepared as well as the disciplined life you know and also a few few years back i went to uh, oli uh, in Hima you know himalayas uh, in uttarakhand for my acclimatization training before going to antarctica itbp so i spent days with this army men and it actually taught me punctuality and self discipline a lot as well as my time in japan uh five years i spent for my phd japan is a country which is really really fascinated uh, with the punctuality the culture is really the punctuality is imbibed into the japanese culture uh, you know you might know the japanese trains are how how much punctual it's not really uh, trains but the schedule everything is extremely punctual so punctuality matters a lot you know so self discipline as well so rituals have got a lot of power because it actually automates the same task again and again right so ritualization of the task is really important especially for the morning ritual right so morning the first one hour or one and half hour it's always better to ritualize it habit stacking method is one of the thing which i, I recently learned uh, by the james clear's book called atomic habits so habit stacking is to develop a new productive habit Uh, for example uh, you know meditation i used to meditate sometimes uh, you know uh, uh, there is no actually irregularly i used to meditate but then after learning about this habit stacking just to inculcate this habit a uh, new habit into my lifestyle uh, i you know i stack this habit on the top of an existing habit uh, for example every day morning i brew my coffee so the time of the coffee brewing for me it's 7 minutes so that 7 minute i carved the time for meditation for 5 minutes so now every day morning when the my coffee is brewing uh, you know i i meditate for 5 minutes so that's a very interesting way to uh, cultivate new habits and um, of course uh, success is a product of the daily habits not once in lifetime transformation overnight success is a myth it's a quote from the atomic habit highly accessible book i recommend every one of you uh, if i if you ask me one productivity book which which i would like to recommend to you it would be atomic habits not that expensive book go ahead it's one of the best book i've ever read in my life another uh, you know good tip is something called seinfeld's unbreakable chains of dots to create the productive habit uh, for example walking you know so i every day evening i walk uh in the in uh, around my colony so you know walking if i walk i put a dot on my calendar so that dot should be unbreakable 
you know so that is what the commitment which I, it's a promise to myself uh, to keep up with this habit so nowadays i don't actually do this uh, the dots i used to do that years ago you know when i started with this habit now without even marking the dots uh, habit has been already part of my daily life every day i go for a walk you know so that's really important this uh, i mean if you really want to start up with a new habit or even to break a habit for example if you drink alcohol daily so if i don't drink alcohol this day you can put a dot second day third day so uh, you know that the chains of dots should be unbreakable so to get rid of a bad habit or to start a new productive habit so that the same fields unbreakable chains of dots is really good option and digital life you can automate it actually saves a ton of your uh, you know the time for example auto hotkey is a very good scripting tool it's a small program you can actually run it in a windows based system or if you don't really like this uh, coding of course auto hotkey coding is nothing it's really really simple even a high school student can do it but if you want more uh, you know the graphical interface and phrase express is really good for the windows so instead of typing all your address again and again you know you can simply uh, make one shortcut for it you know then uh, the address will be typed for you or running a program anything it, it actually saves a lot of your time or canned response of your email i do that uh, because these days i'm doing a lot of things with the uh, uh, virtual you know internship or young science leader thing so many of the my responses are canned responses for that uh, you know the key strokes i predefine my auto hotkey so instead of typing all the response again and again or copy paste from elsewhere you know uh, the scripting is really really interesting and it's it actually saves a lot of your time ifttt is a very good app for the android for automating uh, for example the moment you enter your you know your home the coffee should be brewed so all those tasks you can automate with ifttt of course you need internet of things iot enabled devices in your home uh, for running this uh, you know those coffee things uh, which i told you or for example another ifttt script which i'm which is running in my phone is that uh, the moment i have any schedule in my calendar my phone should go uh, on a silent mode and the moment that schedule is over uh, it will be going back to the normal state so you know i don't really have to manually turn my phone to the silent mode you know everything has been automated so that the script is really good another script which i have in my ifttt is uh, you know nasa's astronomy picture of the day every day morning ifttt downloads that picture for me i don't really have to do that so every day morning you know uh, of course not morning the uh, lunch time when i check my phone i can see that the, the picture of the day of the nasa astronomy picture is already downloaded by ifttt so it's really good one or bibliography automation uh, instead of typing and you know uh, retyping changing the style for different journal which uh, manuscript that you submit to a different journal so you can simply interest into uh, you know reference management that is bibliography automation software like endnote or mentley mentley is freeware uh, you can try that so that way you can automate your digital life as well so order of the task can also save a lot of time so you know you should know that the how which which task to attempt first so that order is really important for example if you are doing uh, uh, laundry so do the laundry first so that you know during when the machine is running you can technically do multiple things at same time you know you can save a lot of time so thoroughly clean your home before leaving for the vacation so that is another tip that uh, i i religiously follow before going for any vacation uh, you know i clean my house first so that while coming back from vacation i have a lot of work so on the top of all that i don't want to clean my home again of course that doesn't mean that i don't have to clean i do have to clean but uh, you know the effort will be much much lesser if i do a pre cleaning and get all your ingredients before you start cooking you know so uh, while cooking taking the ingredient no that is uh, not a good way you know it, it won't save any time so just get all the ingredients on the table on the counter kitchen counter and then start cooking so and also clean up as you go like immediately rinsing the pots before the bits of food can get hardened when it dries up you know so that is the, that is also a very good trick to save a lot of time do most of the unpleasant tasks early in the day and the rest of the day will be much more easier do the big task in the morning and so that you know the small small task you can do that later plus you won't have to you won't have the dread hanging over you so you don't really feel that okay 
uh, that big uh, unpleasant task is there coming up later in the day so you know you will be simply wasting your small small task energy for thinking of that uh, uh, big uh, you know the uh, the sword hanging on the top of your head so that's better and some people uh, they, they actually feel like they, they want to actually uh, hit the small small task because that gives a, a motivation for a higher task so if that works for you go for that so my style is that uh, you know i i tend to uh, do that as i told you the creative task i tend to do that in the morning and then afternoon will be for housekeeping or shallow administrative task and the weekly review i told you it's really really important for me it is in sunday morning so weekly review what i do is that i have a trigger list a master trigger list with lots of things uh, you know promises commitment to others some uh, writing readings to do dorm rent hostel things to do places to visit health exercise to read and listen books you know upcoming deadlines all those things are part of my trigger list financial health wise emotional everything so I, I glance through my trigger list and then i feed on to my weekly review next week i want to plan it right and also what actually happened in my previous week everything i actually look at that auditing uh, i do that on every week so that's that's really really important uh, stuff for personal productivity and while doing this review i also look at my calendar and uh, you know it's a two way process i i feed it i get i you know things from my calendar as well and also i look at the my master notebook so daily to do list bullet journaling and this after weekly review i feed on to it you know the scheduling as well as for my to do list and of course i also look at my pocket notebook so all this thing is part of my weekly review and journaling is extremely important because human beings forget 50 percentage within an hour of reading or listening unless we continuously review what is being learned you know so hebbing house the famous the german psychologist uh, his landmark paper has revealed that we tend to forget a lot so not taking or journaling is the only solution unless we take what actually you know take notes of what actually learned uh, we tend to forget everything so many methods exist go with whatever you like for example microsoft onenote google keep evernote or physical notebook so i prefer simple physical notebook and i follow a method called bullet journaling you can search out what is this bullet journal it's simple just put a bullet and put the note on it you know and if you are completed with that task you simply cross it that's it simple as that and uh, if you if you did not did not complete it uh, turn that bullet into a greater than sign and then reschedule to another day you know so that way you can do that bullet journaling bullet journaling is really really simple and you can also put one uh, round a circle for the events of that day and you know if you complete that event just cross it that's all so i also use google keep for capturing random notes from the web and also one note for the project like youtube video the video which i you make it now you know you're you're watching it right now i have my own notebook for this video and essay or recipes all this i have i use one note because i capture i or arrange it nicely so that i can come back at later point of time so for to do list have top five high priority task in a list form so that is what i do my my style of my to do list is that i have just five uh, points in my to do list every day of which the first point is the first uh, the most important thing so how do you decide is that point is most important or not ask yourself if this was the only thing you did today would you be satisfied that is a question you have to ask so if the answer is yes then that task is high prior a task so you put that task on the top of your to-do list so usually i make this list in the evening a day before so the previous evening i make this list for the next day and paste it somewhere you see in a highly accessible manner it's really important if you have a to-do list and it is deep inside your notebook which you don't even look at it then what is the point of having the to-do list i always put on the top for example the top of my desktop computer where i can i can see that I, you know i have always access onto it so it's really important i use post it with sharpie markers so that method works me uh, fine you know it, it does wonders for me i don't even write with the uh, usual pen or pencil uh, because that is not really bold enough for to cap catch hold of my attention so sharpie the marker is really good and post it you know uh, square yellow post it notes are absolutely fabulous for me any do google task google keep are also popular apps for to do list but doesn't work for me i like simple post it method 
but if uh, you know for example any do works for you go for that why not check it out and then decide which method works fine for you and of course uh, you know the the scouts and guides have taught me a lot of things especially being proactive rather than the reactive so the motto of the scout is be prepared for any challenges in your life always be prepared that's that's an excellent time saving method you know be prepared before attempting any uh, you know any any task in your life you know and also be prepared for any contingencies you might see that so this is another uh, you know uh, well known quote if i had 6 hours to chop down a tree i would spend the first 4 hours sharpening the axe so this is a you know misattributed quote to abraham lincoln no it, it was not actually by the abraham lincoln but you can see so many web references saying that this quote is by the abraham lincoln it's not it's an anonymous quote but the quote is profound you know so first four hours only for sharpening the axe because you know if you have a sharp axe then uh, you can actually cut lots of trees in one go right so it is being proactive preparation is the key friends it's really really important and it saves a lot of your time so to avoid procrastination that is actually not doing the task in time so if the task takes only two minutes to complete just do it uh, don't schedule it you know uh, do it now there is something called two minute rule of the productivity so it, this rule have actually saved a lot of uh, my task from going for procrastinating uh, days or, or even weeks if it's a small task then why to waste time or schedule it or putting inside the to-do list no just do it for example sending an important email just send it you know so rather than scheduling it i will do that later don't do that if it takes just two minutes then do it that is my trick so do the most important task first thing in the day that i already told you because of the willpower is uh, the reservoir is limited so as the days pass by the willpower keep on uh, reducing you know by the time of your uh, when you reach the evening then no you, your energy levels are way less to do any important task so it's another profound quote by the same Seneca the stoic philosopher 2000 years old Roman quote putting off the things is the biggest waste of life it snatches away each day as it comes and denies us the present by promising the future the greatest obstacle to living is expectancy so see how profound the chord is so the putting off the thing is really the biggest waste because you know snatches away the day and a promise of the future so don't get deceived by that promise and multitasking is mostly myth because multitasking is not usually not productive so monotasking on important tasks increases the accuracy and decreases the time so i you know whenever i write a, a blog post or an article or create a youtube video like this i don't actually do any other task when i'm uh, on a computer you know when i'm writing something or when i'm actually talking to somebody i don't actually multitask i just concentrate on that particular task right because it increases the accuracy it's really really important to improve you know improve the accuracy as well as the attention as well as focus so monotasking is important not multitasking but if multitasking works for you then go for it why not so for me i, I i'm not inherently against multitasking i do multitasking for certain uh, you know tasks which are not that important for example i like to listen to podcasts while walking in the mornings and i also listen uh, workout music while running you know so uh, uh, you know this kind of workout music kind of increases my endurance that is what my experience says if i run without this music uh, you know i get tired after quite some time but if i'm listening to this high be beat uh, you know workout music i can actually run longer you know and without actually uh, uh, getting myself tired so this kind of music really helps you so this is that multitasking uh, it works for me so just check out if it works for you go for that and there is a very interesting psychological effect called zygarnik effect so what is that leave projects unfinished to keep ruminating that's really important uh, for example if you're writing a blog post on a very interesting idea then what i do is that i stop it in the middle of the sentence i don't even complete that sentence so that i have time for ruminate on it and then i go for a walk and after coming back you know from that walk i have lots of new ideas you know so that i can expand it uh, i can review it and i can revise it you know i can actually take the entire uh, essay into a brand new direction so that is really important the psychonic effect uh, a very interesting call by edison uh, you know the famous inventor 
never go to sleep without a request to your subconscious so go to your sleep with request to your subconscious so even during sleep people actually get lots of ideas you know so that's really really interesting all this is uh, because of the zygernik effect you stop it in the middle of sentence or the ideas don't complete that idea let it brew for a while uh, before uh, even writing a good essay you know the essay can significantly be improved uh, by making good use of this zygernik effect taking leverage from it and another very interesting technique for the productivity is called structured pomodoro technique pomodoro is basically uh, tomato uh, italian word for tomato the pomodoro uh, because there is a, there used to be a timer in, in you know it's a it's it's a pretty classic kitchen timer and the timer is shaped like a tomato so that is why this is called pomodoro technique so it's basically if you are doing a, a creative task which needs uh, which demands a lot of your time and energy then instead of doing all in one go it's always better to divide in small small bouts of intensive task followed by proper break for example 25 minutes long brief intensive bout interspersed with five minute break that is how the pomodoro work stands for you know so during the bout no distraction is allowed sometime uh, you know in original pomodoro also this bout is referred as pomodoro one that is 25 minutes of work followed by five minutes break then second pomodoro starts 25 minutes then five minutes break then after every four such shorter pomodoro you go for a 30 minutes longer break so that is the four pomodoro forms one set you know like in tennis so this is how the pomodoro technique works and this technique is really good if you are a creative uh, person so if you're really if you're if you're an artist for example or if you are actually working towards your manuscript you know uh, not not really technical manuscript but some some creative manuscript like a popular science article or a blog post or writing a non-fiction book or a fiction a novel you know all these are creative or writing a poem so you know you work for uh, 25 minutes and take a break and then you know, you know this pomodoro technique really works and breaks aid in assimilation and perhaps idea brewing the same thing which i told you earlier is a cygernic effect so taking adequate break is also very important and to save your time uh, you know rss or xml feeds are really good i use a software called feedly so as you can see here so many journals instead of going to these journal one by one in their website i just have to click here with you know all these headlines and the whole story i can see without any ads so this feedly actually saves a ton of my time you know so uh, why not you you can also check out the feedly or any of this uh, you know uh, xml reader or uh, syndicate reader you know so popular science journals also saves a lot of time instead of actually looking at the science section of every single news article simply read one of the popular science you know uh, journal uh, for example new scientist or scientific american in india we have a dream 2047 and science reporter and of course there are a lot of regional uh, popular science journals too for example shastra keralam and eureka where i also do contribute in and also read new section of the nature or science so that is highly accessible though the articles are not that accessible but new section is really accessible podcast also saves a lot of your time because i told you uh, you can just listen to the podcast while going for a walk or run or while commuting you know if you spend significant time on commuting you can why not you can make good use of it by listening to the podcast some good podcast which i can always recommend is naked scientist npr science friday free economics bbc forum and so on podcast republic is a good free client for the android uh, you know if you are using an android phone i suggest you podcast republic as a software for downloading and managing your podcast and for audiobooks uh, because audiobooks also help in multitasking while doing a core you know the shallow work for example house cleaning or dishwashing audiobooks is nothing but narrated books in an audio form you know professional readers they read out uh, the book for you to you know to actually uh, catch up uh, without physically reading any book so smart audiobook player is a good client for the android that is my favorite so smart audiobook player uh, of course is a freeware but premium version you have to pay for it so it's uh, another quote i like uh, this is by albert einstein life is like riding a bicycle to keep your balance you must keep moving so lifelong learning is really important so to improve your core competency be resourceful and always stay a student you know 
keep on reading so read more but choosey what you read it's just like internet there are a lot of crap books if you think that a glorious library with full of uh, nice looking books are really amazing treasure trove no you are mistaken any library if you look 99% of books are crap only 1% are really good books so you know it's not that anything published is worth of reading your time no we have we all have limited number of time in our life we are marching towards the death so we have to prioritize what to read which book to read not that all books are really good you know a lot of books or as i told you 99% of books are real crap just like the internet only some resources are reliable same way as for the books as well so be choosy what to read and maintain a standard of performance you know so uh, Im improve your core competency by reading a lot and speed versus velocity that the difference here is that the speed is not a vector but velocity is a vector right so productivity is also a vector so vector means the direction matters where exactly you are in, in uh, you know putting investing your efforts in uh, that is really really important it's not that hard work but exactly hard work in important task over the urgent task you know that prioritization is really important where exactly you put the directionality is really important so that is why productivity is uh, like velocity it's a vector and also don't forget something called self compassion because you should know when to quit not all the tasks are you know for example uh, if i dream of going to moon i can go to moon no you cannot go to the moon only very few people can go to the moon right and you should know when to quit exactly you know that's really really important and dream big follow your heart follow your passion etc are not good advices you know i have extensively written about it please have a look it's linked up in the you know in in, in the uh, this show notes of this video below so uh, don't be passionate and be don't be overconfident plan and prepare for contingencies you know the bad days uh, that's more important uh, than simply uh, being over ambitious and uh, you know uh, think like an overachiever no the, don't be like that perfect is the enemy of good so that's really really important uh, looking for the perfection and wasting all your time and energy for making one task in the most perfect way is simply wasting your time so there is a very famous concept in japan called wabi sabi so wabi sabi means finding beauty in imperfect impermanent and incomplete things because uh, these are natural things you know so uh, try to find that joy and pleasure and aesthetics in such uh, things in your life which are impermanent and imperfect so that is exactly don't go for over perfectionism quantity is sometimes better than quality everybody say quality is better than quantity not really Qual quantity is also better uh, for example lucky imaging in curiosity sixth episode of curiosity i have covered about this lucky imaging on uh, gemini how gemini observatory took that fantastic picture of the jupiter it's not that they actually refined their algorithm to take one good picture of jupiter no they simply took thousands upon thousands of images and one of the image was really nice so that is what the quantity is uh, they it just beat left and right the quality a related concept with the academic publication is something called equal odds rule so the true impact of publication is not really uh, correspond to the impact factor alone or the number of publications that you have in quality journal you know lots of publication sometime is better because out of this lots of publication one publication may turn out to be uh, you know a, a paradigm shifting after many years who knows so that is also very important the equal odds rule so quantity is sometime better than quality that is uh, something that we all have to learn so and be self compassionate that's really really important acknowledge that the task always take longer than we expect that law is not something called hofstadter's law so the task take longer than we expect or we anticipate there is a, a connected law called gates law many people overestimate what they can achieve in one year so you know over uh, estimate means that they think that they, they can do a lot higher than what they can it's possible within one year so while underestimate what they can achieve in the span of 10 years so in 10 years is sufficiently large time you can do a lot of things publish very interesting books but people tend to underestimate they think 
that they cannot do that much in the 10 years time so that is gates law it's a very very interesting law another of my favorite quote is be less curious about the people and more curious about ideas by Mary Curie so yeah instead of uh, you know simply squandering your time on mindless uh, you know gossiping right so look at what is actually very interesting ideas read more so if you look at the opinions facts or concept so concept is more important than the facts facts are more important than the opinions so facts are more important than the opinion that's really important opinions cannot be proven true or false unlike facts and facts are specific pieces of information that are memorized for example socrates taught plato and who taught aristotle or 24 alphabets in the greek or charon is the biggest moon of dwarf planet pluto you know use you can use memory device to memorize the facts like mnemonics flashcards saying out loud uh, japanese method of pointing and calling all this saves a lot of your time to memorize the facts now i need a drink alcoholic of course after a heavy lecture involving quantum mechanics is popular mnemonic to memorize you know pi 3.14 right so if you memorize this one so you can see that now is three one four one five so that way these are just a common mnemonics that you can make use of so concepts are more important than this kind of facts so facts is simple memory device but concepts are more important for example rotophytes have triphasic life cycle adverb planet and so on so concepts are giant semantic tree learn from fundamentals before advanced so learning from the advanced straight away jumping into advanced is a very very uh, bad stuff that many students do it so you have to start from the fundamentals and if you want to you know learn about from the textbook sq3r method is fantastic for uh, surveying from the which textbook to learn so sq3r is basically survey question read recall revision and for the, the you know for the textbook reading the first step here is survey for the best textbook in the field you have to look at different kinds of textbook and choose the best you know and scan the chosen textbook illustrations change the book if not appealing so don't start completely read it just scan it look at the illustrations and if you don't like this textbook just change it and get a new textbook you know in the in the in a bookstore of course you don't have to buy it don't commit it uh, yourself first and of course the teachers also it's not that one subject only learn from one teacher no you can you can try different teachers and whichever teacher teaching style you like go for it in the time of online teaching and MOOC getting multiple teachers for the same class is not that big deal at all and question is that to write down key questions about the subject that the student have in her mind about the subject so before even start reading the textbook so this prepares the student to look for the right information in the book next up is read read the textbook carefully with extensive note taking on the notebook so there is a method called coronal method so in which you put a lot of margin space and top space so margin space is for re 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 reviewing while top space is for the the revise after you know after one week time so all this revision helps you to put those concept deep inside your memory right so while reading try to look up the answers for the earlier questions and if answers were not found read the textbook again so that is the read stuff recall is try to recall the answers from the memory but if it's stuck then it may be looked up in the book right and finally revision periodic scheduled review of the notes teaching is also a good way to learn teaching others is an excellent way to learn the concepts and for teachers to save time flip class method is amazing record your lectures audio or video and let the students prepare before the lectures like what i'm doing with my youtube videos you know i lecture uh, in my a number of my lectures are in the youtube and i ask my students to watch it before coming to the class so the class time i'm utilizing for discussion you know so problem solving and discussion for the converting the classroom so it saves a lot of your time year after year of course you need to invest some time for initial first first year and then the next year onwards is going to be really really uh, it, it saves a lot of your time because uh, lectures become automated of course if, if you want to correct it you would need to correct it and of course you can do that in the discussion section also and other productivity tips include cultivate humility diligence and self-awareness are important over ego and feedback loops and reflect on the performance that is a japanese concept called kaizen change for good continuous incremental improvement 
learn from the failures i told you this is a core scientific methodology learn from the failures so that is exactly what the feedback loop is all about you might know the quote insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results you know so practice makes man perfect no it doesn't so learn from the mistake is more important than simple practice or doing the same thing over and over again ambitious but patient patience is also important innovative without being brash you can be innovative you don't have to be brash brave without being dangerously brave you know dissolve your opinions judgments assumptions beliefs and stay open and curious stay a student read a lot manage emotions to manage time effectively so emotional management is really important because mental energy is very important all we uh, you know we all have limited willpower especially daily willpower is really limited that's why i'm telling over and over again that prioritize your work so that you know the the creative task you're spending on the first half of the day and focus on effort not on the outcome so only on the effort you have to actually focus outcome may come or not don't worry about it and if failures come just endure it that's always better so failures are not antonyms of success it's part of success so that's uh, one of the uh, common misconceptions uh, because of the group thing in our society hardwired in our social norms that failures are considered to be antonyms of the success but it's not it's part Failures are, we, you know, we have to treat it as an information to inform the future decision, just like Bayesian concept or Bayesian inference. Unexpected results are inflection points to keep improving. So that is really important to treat the failures in that way. And to live happy, live hidden. Be unpretentious. Don't be show off, you know. So living hidden is really a good key to live a happy life. And be lesser, do more be lesser but do more do more work you know to inspire others and don't compare yourself with others that's a, that's another common mistake everybody does like we, we tend to compare with other other people don't do that holistic systems are better than goals consider the world like a niche you know so interweb interlinked like web like reticulous niche so that everybody has its own task in the world it's not that only scientists or professors are really great or politicians and the other uh, creatures have no roles. Not like that. Anybody has got its own role to play in, in the giant niche of the world. Facts are better than the dreams. You know, dream big it doesn't lead you anywhere. Uh, but action and, uh, you know, uh, th that actually uh, is important. Action and reading and uh, doing, doing the things is more important than simply dreaming about it. Focus on action and education. So both are really important. Forgo validation and status. Don't worry much about the validation and status. It may come, it might not come. It might take more time for validation to appear. It doesn't worry anything about it at all. Just concentrate on action and education. And embrace the change, randomness and handle uncertainties. All these are really important, but people tend to overlook it. Randomness, uh, you know. So instead of that, they, they think that the life is like a linear fashion. No, life is always with lots of randomness, lots of hurdle and lot of changes. So uh, be prepared for the contingencies. This is another famous quote by Socrates. Just as one person delights in improving his farm and another his horse, so I delight in attending to my own improvement day by day. He didn't say that I have to improve myself day by day no it, there's nothing like an external force but he said that he is finding uh, a delightness he, i delight in attending to my own improvement day by day so self-improvement is really important uh, to improve yourself so you know learning from the the failures is important the feedback loops are important and how you are spending your you know effort the task prioritization of task is important so as managing the time and emotions everything matters so we should treat our life as a holistic system you know, that's extremely important. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you like this video, please click thumbs up and share it in the relevant groups and subscribe to my channel. I tend to feature a lot of videos, original content like this. Thanks and have a nice day. Goodbye.